we can as well later consult this if you like. Um, so I will start with the seminar because we have scheduled like one hour for it, including questions. If there will be some people that will join in the meantime, uh, then uh, we'll see also how it goes. And uh, the time for presentation is like 45 minutes and there will be some time afterwards for any questions that you may have. So I'll, I'll try to keep myself on time. In any case, if you will have any questions in the meantime, then feel free to ask me. So uh, this, this paper is a, a research project, is a joint work with two colleagues of mine, Roxana Fernandez from Crest, uh, based in Paris, and Christina Zulener from University of Vienna. I am myself professor of economics at the University of Cape Town. Uh, and as the title of the paper says, it's about how bundling impacts firms entry decision, and we use here evidence uh, from broadband industry. So uh, starting with motivation, and I must say for, for these reasons that are discussed here, this paper is not really uh, highly relevant at this stage for South Africa, because precisely of uh, the type of services that are being offered in South Africa, other African countries versus say European countries, and also other countries globally. So this paper is in particular focused on uh, what is called quadruple play uh, uh, telecommunication stars. I will explain in a second what they are. Uh, and more broadly, it's related to uh, bundling uh, different telecommunication services or bundling any type of services or products overall. Um, so, uh, what are the stars that I mentioned? So when it comes to telecommunications, uh, you can buy telecommunication services from separate operators, like you do when you purchase mobile services, right? You, you would buy everything, which means internet, voice, uh, messaging from single operator. And the same when it comes to uh, fixed broadband services. So those of you who have fixed broadband connection at home, uh, you would buy this from a single operator. And uh, since, uh, since uh, a couple of years, uh, there's been increasing popularity of uh, bundles where fixed services are bundled with other services on fixed network, such as say TV channels, or uh, bundling fixed and mobile services together when you buy uh, both your uh, mobile connection and fixed connection from the same operator. So in fact, this requires that uh, the firm that offers the services has both mobile and fixed services. So in South Africa, this would be essentially only telecom that has some coverage uh, with respect to fixed broadband based on copper technology, and at the same time has mobile license and therefore offers also mobile services. The other operators, so MTN, uh, Vodacom, uh, CellC, uh, if they were to offer bundles, they would also need to invest in a fixed internet. And maybe some of them already start investing. I'm not sure about this. Uh, so this would come in the form of fiber connections or maybe eventual cable or satellite. Right. So uh, as I say, uh, there is one type of products which are called triple play tariffs. And they bundle to get together internet, TV channels, and uh, also uh, uh, voice services. So when you make phone calls in traditional way from your telephone at home. Then there's another type of tariffs which are called quadru quadruple play tariffs. And they, they are bundles of triple play. So all the services that I mentioned, plus uh, mobile services on the top. And they are extremely popular in many countries around the world. Uh, say in countries like France and Spain, in 2017, about 75% uh, in France and 42% of households, they use fixed mobile bundles, right? So now they are, in fact, so 2020, there'll be even more. So they are major majority of type of services and products that people buy. So there are much less people who buy single, say, mobile unbundled connection and unbundled uh, fixed connection. And since they are so popular, then this raises also a question whether this type of offers impact competition. 
And this may be in particularly so because there are, of course, also firms that cannot offer bundles. So it's a question whether they are disadvantaged by the fact that they cannot offer the, the bundles and consumers would prefer to purchase from firms that offer bundles. Why some firms cannot offer bundles? Well, first, because this is a big investment to deploy fixed broadband network. So firms may have no capital to deploy these networks, let's say, I don't know, Cell C, which is a smaller operator, may not, not have funds to uh, deploy uh, GSM and LTE networks and also fiber networks, even though these are rich companies, but still the investments are substantial. Uh, but even more so, if there are some smaller size entrants into providing broadband services uh, through fiber, so, and there are quite many of them in different areas in South Africa, in Cape Town, Johannesburg, they, they do not have mobile licenses, so they also cannot offer fixed mobile bundles. They can only offer uh, independent fiber connections. And these this bundles would typically be cheaper overall than a uh, single service. So when you buy a uh, fixed and mobile together, then you would get, you would pay overall lower price than if you buy, buy them separately from different operators. So, so that's one thing. How does this bundling impact competition in telecommunications? Another thing is related to overall how bundling impacts competition because telecommunications is not the only industry where you have bundles. When you go to McDonald's, you also buy a bundle of French fries, Mac and Coke, uh, as well as in restaurants, as well as you, when you purchase airline tickets together with hotels. So bundling is extremely common in many industries. And also in those industries, firms that bundle may have some advantage over other firms, especially in case when they are dominant or have a higher, better market position than others. So these are the kind of questions that we want to ask in this paper. How bundling impacts the number of firms that enter? Because if bundling has negative impact on the ability to compete and profits, then there will be less firms that are willing to enter this market. Right? They wouldn't be able to compete with firms that bundle. Um, and uh, what is also observed in the case of uh, the data that we have in the country that we consider, is that there are different types of entrants. So there may be a smaller size entrants, like also in South Africa, firms that don't have mobile licenses, or there may be bigger size entrants, like exactly CellC, uh, Vodacom, MTN, they can also start investing in fixed broadband connections. Um, so the question is whether they are impact equal, impacted equally by bundling, and one could presume that smaller firms are impacted more than big firms because big firms they generally can also offer bundles because they would tend to have uh, mobile licenses as well. Uh, so this is the question that we ask and um, we are in particularly interested here in entry in, in a fixed broadband industry. So number of firms that offer fixed broadband services uh, because entry into mobile services is uh, controlled in terms of number of licenses. So you cannot just enter and offer mobile services. Well, you can do it as a so-called MVNO or reseller, but you cannot be an independent network operator without having license. Well, if you want to provide uh, fixed broadband services, then there is generally no really uh, regulation uh, of entry. So I think anybody pretty much can start network and invest in uh, providing fixed broadband services to uh, households at different locations. Right, so, so, th so this is, not, uh, this is a not, not a new question in terms of economic theory, uh, because as I said, bundling is extremely common. And there's been lots of theoretical studies that uh, try to comment on the potential impact of bundling on competition. And especially say, authors that also the, the papers that date back to the 90s already, so pretty old papers, they pointed that bundling can foreclose competition because if there is a firm that is monopolist or has a dominant position in one market uh, and then bundles its, its, pro its monopolist, monopolized product in one market with some other products in which it, it, uh, in, in, in a market in which it doesn't have 
strong market position, then it can leverage this monopolistic position in one market to another market. And in this way, say, eliminate competitors and say, foreclose entry. So uh, as I said, this, this requires that there is a firm that has a very strong market position or is monopolist in one market and uses this position to uh, monopolize another market. So how does it work in telecommunications? Well, te telecommunications is a standard example of, for an industry in which there's uh, some dominance of firms that previously had monopolistic position. So it is the case in South Africa because uh, telecom essentially has like 95%, I guess, or more of fixed broadband services. So it's, it's not a monopoly, but still it's almost monopoly or has substantial market share. It's the same case in almost every country around the globe where there was a monopolist that eventually became privatized, and, but it still keeps very strong market position in terms of market share. But on the top of that, these firms essentially own the whole telecommunications infrastructure, uh, namely the copper networks. They used to, were used to provide uh, voice services before the time of internet. And then these net, this networks could be also upgraded to provide broadband services. Uh, so they essentially also own the, the whole broadband infrastructure, except this newer network, networks like cable or fiber. So as I say, uh, this framework fits to telecommunications because exactly this uh, dominant telecommunications operator in fixed broadband market can potentially leverage its monopoly position into mobile market, right? Uh, and it can, be, it can be also the other way around. So uh, all there are just four firms that have mobile licenses. They also are very, very powerful, rich firms, and they also have in some cases, high market shares like Vodacom and MTN, they can also use uh, their position in mobile market and leverage into a broadband market by bundling with uh, fixed broadband services. And in this way, eliminate smaller competitors that cannot offer, offer mobile services. Right, so this is exactly what we are interested in, whether this can happen that bundling uh, uh, fixed and mobile services can foreclose competition and entry into fixed broadband market. But, uh, the, but apart from potential negative effects of fixed mobile bundling, there are obviously also some positive effects. Namely, as I said already, uh, bundling reduces the cost of providing both services. Overall, if you bund uh, purchase bundle, you pay less than buying this product separately. So consumers may somewhat benefit if they buy bundles, they pay less. Uh, so this is a, a common price discrimination strategy where selling, say, uh, bundles and unbundled products, firms are able to make more profit, but this also benefits consumers as uh, economics of price discrimination uh, says in general. Apart from that, there's, a, of course, also reduction in overall transaction costs. So consumers uh, don't have to waste their time on signing up uh, different contacts with different providers. So th these two effects, uh, whether, whether it's competi there, there's competitive effects or there's anti-competitive effects, they can appear together. Uh, which one is stronger? Um, this is also an empirical question. With respect to the literature on this subject, so as I said, bundling is common not just in telecommunications. Nevertheless, uh, most of the data that is available on bundling is actually for telecommunications markets. So the majority of papers I am aware, aware of uh, deal with in, in some way with telecommunications markets and uh, they can be divided in two types. So on one hand, there are papers that uh, try to estimate whether bundling impacts consumers' decision. And the way it can impact uh, consumers is that precisely because of lower transaction costs, uh, when purchasing a bundle, consumers who buy bundle, they are less willing to switch to other suppliers. Uh, so in, in, in that sense, so there may be switching costs and switching costs uh, may be impacted by bundling. So as consumers have higher switching costs when they purchase bundles. Uh, and there's evidence that indeed uh, this happens. 
So if firms bundle their services, there is, there is less churn. So it's also a strategic decision for firms to offer bundles because uh, then they can keep customers for longer. And when, when, when increasing switching costs by selling bundles, uh, firms can also therefore potentially charge higher prices than they would. So the other stream of literature looks into the question of uh, price discrimination through bundling and impact of bundling on welfare, uh, incentives to bundle, um, and exactly um, whether this is a means of price discrimination. Okay, nevertheless, so all the papers that are cited here, as I said, they deal uh, with telecommunications or with uh, cable TV, uh, but that's also basically uh, related to telecommunications. Okay, if you have any questions, please interrupt me at any time. So, okay, moving forward, um, to give you a picture of uh, how competition in telecommunications markets work, uh, in general, we can distinguish two types of competition. One type is called inter-platform inter competition. The other type is called intra-platform competition. So what is the difference between these two? Uh, we speak about inter-platform competition when uh, firms didn't invest in own networks. Uh, and these networks may be based on the same or different technologies. Uh, so in general, the technologies that are used to supply broadband connections are copper networks. So these are the traditional networks that were used before for voice services. Then there are fiber networks, uh, cable networks, satellite, and of course, mobile broadband networks. So these are the, 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 the main types. Then there are maybe also some uh, Wi-Fi networks, but they also require bits of uh, uh, fixed in infrastructure. So inter-platform competition is when different firms, they invest in own network networks. For instance, one firm deploys cable and then supplies uh, internet and also uh, TV channels, or another firm deploys fiber, right? And, and then there's also like the old infrastructure based on copper network, which is owned typically by the incumbent. So there are no firms that are deploying copper networks because these are outdated old networks. If there's any new firm coming to the market that invests in own infrastructure, this will be based either on cable or fiber networks. Then there is uh, intra-platform competition, and intra-platform competition is possible because of regulation. Uh, especially there is something that is called local loop unbundling. And uh, local loop, uh, which is also called last mile, this is the final connection between household and the telecommunications network. Uh, so local loop unbundling means like granting access to this final connection uh, to any new entrants that want to supply uh, telecommunication services. And there's, there's no reason to deploy and invest in a new connection between households and the network, except when fiber networks are deployed. So uh, the way this competition works is that uh, the owner of this infrastructure, which is the ex-monopolist, by regulation has to provide access to own infrastructure and then can also charge something for this access. And this rate, which is charged by the incumbent, is regulated. So how, how does this work technically? Uh, here I have a, a little picture. Uh, technically, local loop unbundling uh, works as follows. So there are households, which are here, that are, that are connected to internet infrastructure. Uh, first, the first stage of connection is through what is called street cabinet. So these are the small boxes that you see on the street. And this, these boxes are then connected to what is called uh, main distribution frame. A main distribution frame is usually a smaller size building, maybe sometimes bigger size, in which uh, servers and other telecommunications infrastructure is based. And when it comes to provision of broadband services, there must be also uh, what is called DSLAM. So this is equipment which enables providing uh, internet based on DSL technology. So when the first time internet was available in some location through this copper network, it's exactly when the incumbents of telecom invested in uh, this equipment and installed it in main distribution frame uh, and, and therefore all households that were connected to this main distribution frame 
could then have broadband internet. When it, when it comes to uh, any other firm uh, providing the services, this is only possible if these firms get access to this building. And of course, uh, telecom or other ex-incumbent uh, or incumbent operator wouldn't want to provide access to this building without regulation. So that's exactly regulation that forces these firms to enable other firms to uh, get access to, to this building and therefore start operating uh, or taking over connections from the incumbent to provide broadband services. Right, so this is how it works technically. Therefore, entry means that as a result of regulation, uh, a firm that wants to provide internet services uh, gets access to this building. Do you have any questions? All right, if there are no questions, then let me move on. So, um, so what we want to model in this paper is exactly entry of uh, smaller size fixed broadband operators. And this entry takes place by requesting access to incumbent's infrastructure. And the, and the request is not to the whole network, but it's uh, at local uh, region. So there are lots of main distribution frames that are distributed across the country. And one by one, the entrants can request access to this main distribution frames in which case, if we observe that they requested uh, access, then we report this as entry. So let me tell you what, what sort of data we use to, to model this problem economically. So we use in, uh, detailed information for all consumers from the incumbent operator in the country which we consider so its friends. Uh, and this information contains uh, this, this information is about the type of tariffs that these consumers have, where there are the following types of tariffs. Uh, so you can have either a naked internet connection, so just internet, no telephone, no TV channels. Then you can have uh, internet connection together with telephone, so you can make phone calls as well. Then you can have uh, internet, telephone, as well as TV channels. This is called triple play. So this is like the first bundle. Uh, and then you can have also what's called quadruple play, which includes uh, internet, uh, voice services, TV channels, and mobile services. Right, so these are, the, these are the four types of services that you can get. Um, so this is the situation in France, as well as in many other countries. In South Africa, I guess you have maybe two options. You can get uh, just the internet connection, internet plus voice. Now I'm not sure whether you can get internet voice plus uh, TV channels, so maybe you can tell me. I don't have actually fixed connection myself, but for sure you cannot get uh, a quadruple play tires. Right, so it, it's of course different when you watch uh, TV channels that are provided by some other suppliers like HBO or Netflix. This is not bundling. So bundling means that you get uh, TV channels uh, also provided by uh, Telcom and, and Telcom can purchase, of course, content uh, from other suppliers. In any case, so these are the, the types of tariffs that consumers can have. And as I say, we have information about the full database from the operator and there were 9.5 million customers, which represented about 40% of the market. So um, unfortunately, we cannot use this information on individual level because of uh, privacy concerns. So we have to uh, aggregate this somehow. And we, we aggregate this information to the level of municipality. In the case of France, there are 36,000 local municipalities. And because we know the location of every consumer, so in this way we can compute the share of customers of the incumbent operator that have uh, bundled offers. And here we are in particular interested in fixed power bundles. Right. So for every municipality, we know what percentage of customers from the incumbent uh, use these bundles. Then the remaining information is also on municipality level because we will model entry on the local level. 
right? So we need to collect all information on the same unit of uh, observation. So we have information about the number of lines that were taken over by the entrants. Uh, in this way, we can compute the market share of entrants at local municipality level versus the incumbent. Um, then we also know the identity of entrants in each municipality, as well as the, for the number of entrants. We also know uh, when for the first time municipality was connected to internet technology. So there was no internet before. Once the incumbent operator installed this DSLAM in the main distribution frame, since then uh, households connected to this main distribution frame can have in access to internet. Then we also know about uh, the location of this main distribution frames across country and how many lines are connected to it from different municipalities. And finally, since we don't have really detailed information on customers, we match with this data and socioeconomic variables from the statistical office and this information is also on municipality level. Now there's one issue which we need to resolve because our, our data on, uh, on, on this market is on municipality level, while based on my discussion, the entry in fact takes place on the MDF level, so main distribution frame. Uh, we need to somehow collapse our municipality level to the level, municipality level data to the level of MDFs. Uh, and that's because as I say, um, based on my, my, my discussion, entry takes place on MDF level, not at municipality level. Therefore, it would be unreasonable to model uh, this problem on municipality level, right? So we need to make this uh, adjustment. And the way we do this is uh, we compute uh, weighted average using the number of lines from different municipalities that are connected to given MDF as weights. So we weight, we weight by the number of lines, all socioeconomic variables, as well as the, the other information. With respect to the number of identity and number of entrants, we simply count a unique uh, number of entrants that are connected to given MDF from different municipalities. So in this way, we may a bit overestimate the number of entrants uh, at the M MDF level. Okay, so um, we, we started with 36,000 observations for municipalities, and we have only cross-section data. We don't have a time series. And then uh, there are about 20,000 main distribution frames. So we collapsed this 36,000 uh, observations to 20,000 observations by using this weighted averages. And then we also do some data cleaning. We drop municipalities in which there were lots of inhabitants, so this, they correspond to the biggest cities. Uh, the reason for this is that in this municipalities there will be lots of entrants because they are very attractive. Um, and we also drop municipalities which are very small, less than 200 households. There are lot, lots of municipalities like this. And the reason for this is that these municipalities are so small that in general they are not attractive at all for anybody to enter and provide internet services. So the only firm that actually provides internet services in the smaller size municipalities is the ex monopolist which already had this network uh, before. It was built uh, in the post-war period uh, so that essentially everybody had internet, uh, had a telephone connection and now would upgrade internet connection. But it's unlikely that there will be ever any other firm that would want to enter this, this area and start providing independent telecommunication services. We also drop from our sample regions in which an other technology than the copper network was deployed, uh, namely fiber or cable. And the reason for this is that um, the presence of cable and fiber may also impact somehow the, the, the likelihood of entry by other firms, especially smaller size firms. Right? So this, we want to avoid uh, a problem of sort of strategic modeling, uh, how entry of uh, smaller size operators is dependent on presence of fiber and cable. This would be also endogenous. 
uh, therefore we rather uh, don't deal with problem with this problem and we focus on areas in which the only operators that provide broadband services are the smaller size entrants or the incumbent uh, based on DSL technology. So our final data is reduced to 16,000 observations. And here I show you uh, the number of entrants in different municipalities. Uh, oh, sorry, the number of entrants in different MDFs. So, so these entrants are here divided into the small size and big size entrants, where, as I said, small size entrants are firms that, that are generally smaller in size and they, they do not have mobile licenses versus big size entrants are firms that are bigger and they also have uh, mobile licenses on the top of providing fixed broadband services. So, so there were essentially two firms that were like this in France. They are called Free and SFR. Uh, while there's a number of different smaller size entrants. So as you see, based on the statistics, uh, there were zero municipality. Uh, there were 5,350 municipalities in which there was no big and small size entrants, which means that the only firm that provides broadband service at these MDFs and the lines households that are connected to this MDF is the incumbent operator. Right. So in these areas, the incumbent operator is monopolist. Then there were like one, uh, 1,955 municipalities in which there was one big entrant and no small entrants. And also like say 924 municipalities in which there was one small entrant and no big entrant. But the, the respective other numbers can be interpreted the same way. These are the variables that we are using in our paper. So uh, our key variable is First, the number of small and big size entrants in each municipality, and then also the share of fixed mobile bundles, so of share of quadruple play bundles. And we want to model how the share of quadruple play bundles impacts the incentives to enter by small, uh, small and large operators. Apart from that, we of course need to control for other socioeconomic variables that may impact entry. And these variables would be in first place the, the population size, because population size that is connected to given MDF is the market potential. So it's, it's the more households are connected to a given MDF, the more attractive it is to enter it, because then you can potentially take over lines for, for more households. But then also in these biggest areas, that we would see in general more entries. Right, so population size, but also other factors that impact attractiveness or profitability of uh, local markets, such as income per capita, uh, population density, share of adult population, things like share of uh, vacant dwellings, but also the location. So here, mountains would be more expensive to enter. They would also cover generally, uh, uh, the areas in mountains would cover generally less population. Apart from that, we also have information about the time of entry, which I mentioned. So we use this in the form of dummy variables, uh, depending on the year. And we have information about number of mobile antennas that are being uh, deployed in different regions. So mobile is a, a competitor to fixed broadband, but this is also indicative of uh, attractiveness of some areas. There'll be more mobile antennas in areas which are more attractive. Then we also have information of what is called here copper loss, and we use this as an instrument in our estimation. Copper loss is uh, information about the quality of fixed broadband network, uh, and uh, it's due to the feature of uh, copper-based network, copper networks, which is that uh, the quality of your internet connection is a function of the distance between household and the main distribution plane. The farther away your household is from the main distribution frame, the lower will be the quality of connection. And there is a formula uh, that translates distance into the quality of connection. But eventually, if you're too far away from the main distribution frame, then your internet connection will be terrible. If you're very close, then it will be excellent. Right? So, so this copper loss is a measure of quality of connection. And we know quality of connection of every single line in the country. We can therefore compute the the average quality in each municipality. 
Okay, so this is the set of variables that we're using. And now uh, with respect to economic model, so for those of you that are not used to uh, see economic modeling, uh, this may be a bit complicated, but I will be a bit fast on this and uh, you can hopefully also refer to other literature. So we, 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 we set up a structural model of entry where we consider that profits of firms when they enter a given geographic area are a function, function of number of competitors, where there may be big competitors and small competitors. So the profit function is written as a stochastic, uh, stochastic element, so the error term, and the deterministic uh, component, which depends on number of competitors and also other variables. Right? So we all, always need the stochastic element because there will be always something that we cannot explain by, by the variables that we use uh, to explain profit. And now, when, how do we explain that in a given uh, municipality or a given MDF, there was a certain number of entrants. So it must be the case that ent entry of one more firms, firm is unprofitable. Otherwise, we would observe exactly entry of this one more firm. So when we observe a given number of entrants, it must be that when we add one more uh, firm, then, then profits decline uh, on average. And this concerns both entry of uh, big size firms and small size firms. So uh, this can be interpreted as that entry decisions by firms of the same type are strategic substitutes. Right? When there's one more entry, then profits of every firm declines. We also consider that entry decisions by firms of different type are strategic substitutes, or maybe they can be independent. So the same rule applies that, pro that entry of one more firm must decline profits, uh, one more firm of different type must decline profit. Uh, but it may, be also, uh, it, it may also not affect profits at all. So we would have inequality in this case. So there may be either inequality or equality. When would we have equality? So th this would be maybe the case when entry of different type uh, firm will impact, uh, uh, will, be, will be targeting different segment of consumers. So that firms of different type, they cover different market segments. Therefore, when there's entry of different type firm, it concerns only own type, but not the other one because these markets are sort of separate. Now, the third, third assumption which we make is that <clears throat> firms of the same type have a greater impact than different type firms on profits, uh, which means that if we have a fixed number of firms in the market, say and B of large firms and S of small firms, if we would increase the number of big firms and decrease the number of small firms, then profits of big firms would go down and equivalently for small size firms, right? So when we have and B big firms and, and, and S small firms, if we would increase number of small firms and decrease number of big firms by one, then profits of small firms should also decline. This is exactly the condition that says that firms of the same type have greater impact than firms of different type. So what is the interpretation here is that exactly what I said before, that firms of the same type, they can't target the same type of consumers. Okay, so these are uh, three assumptions which we need to make in order to uh, write down the model economically and also then later take it to data. What, what do these assumptions imp imply? They imply that given our specification of profits, including the stochastic element, there will be ranges of error term for which we will observe exactly N, B, N, N, S of firms in the market. And this concerns the error term for profits of big firms and profits of small firms. So this is the condition that comes from assumption one uh, that essentially says that we, we will be observing uh, for some values of the error term exactly N, B, N, N, S, uh, big and small firms in a, at a given location. 
what this is what these conditions here mean is that for nb and ns of firms in a, at a given location profits of these firms will be positive but if there will be one more firm in the market of any type then prof, the marginal profits of this additional firm will be lower so this additional firm doesn't want to enter because uh, it will make negative profits Right, so this is based on assumption one, and, and uh, based on assumption one, there is such equilibrium. Now, the, the other two assumptions, they say, say also something about the type of equilibrium that we have. So in fact, in this, in this model, we might have the problem of multiplicity of equilibrium. That means that uh, it's possible that for some values of the error term, there will be uh, two different outcomes. Uh, and this is what is illustrated on this graph here. So these rectangles here illustrate different types of equilibria, where the red one uh, illustrates equilibrium with N, B, and S of firms of each type. This one illustrates equilibrium with N, B plus one and S minus one number of firms. And this one with N, N B minus one and S plus one uh, firms. But overall, in each of these cases, the total number of firms of any type uh, is the same. And these uh, red areas, they are overlaps, which mean that two, there are two possible outcomes for this range of error terms. Right, so the, the key issue here is to that, uh, well, th this is due to our assumptions. Uh, if our assumptions would be different, then we might have either uh, no multiplicity of equilibrium. This would be the case only if assumption two holds with equality, but it's not very realistic that assumption two will hold with equality. So it's not very realistic that we have the situation and no multiplicity of equilibrium. At the same time, if assumption three wouldn't hold, then we would, ha would have only multiplicity of equilibrium, where three, there would be three outcomes possible for any uh, value of the error terms right so this is this is th this is this result here shown this figure is based on three assumptions and this is the more realistic ones nevertheless uh, this there's still a problem because for the red areas we have multiplicity of equilibrium so the way to go around this problem is to consider that themes enter uh, sequentially and in particular, that big firms are advantage and they can enter the market first. So therefore, any equilibrium, uh, in any, any equilibrium that we should observe uh, with a fixed number of firms, N, B, and S, should be such that uh, the, there's a, the, the number of big firms is, is big. Um, well, so, uh, okay, so how, how to explain it? So that means that in these areas of multiplicity, the equilibrium which would hold would be the one with a greater number of large firms, right? Therefore, we would, by assuming that there's sequential entry at big firms and the first, eliminate the other type of equilibrium. So this is what is illustrated here, right? When we consider that firms enter sequentially, then again, these areas correspond to uh, a given combination of big and small firms, but there is no more multiplicity of equilibrium. We, we always have that the equilibrium of a greater number of firms is the one that takes place in the cases when there could be multiplicity of equilibrium. So now, when we don't have the problem of multiplicity, we can specify uh, each of these outcomes in terms of number of firms as a function of uh, the error term, right? So we can write down essentially the probability function for observing a given number of small and big firms and this will be, uh, be given by the following difference, where the first uh, integral corresponds to the area that gives N, B, and S of uh, big and small firms respectively. And the second area that we deduct corresponds to the area of multiplicity. So from the original, the blue area in here, we deduct the small corner here that uh, now is not possible to take place because uh, it involves a greater number of firms and, and, and belong, uh, of big size and belongs to the other uh, equilibrium outcome. Nevertheless, so, so we need to specify all these possible outcomes and write them down 
in the form of a probability function. And then the probabilities can be put together into a likelihood function and we maximize likelihood function to estimate parameters of our model. So very quickly to uh, wrap it up. So what are the parameters of our model? We write down a pretty standard uh, profit function that has been used in this literature where profits exactly depend on market size, so population. They also depend on set of socioeconomic variables that control for heterogeneity of markets. And they also depend on the share of households that bundle fixed and mobile services. So we, we expect that bundling negatively impacts profits of firms because when firms enter and there are lots of people who have bundles, it's much harder for them to attract customers. They would need to maybe subsidize them somehow uh, therefore the probability would be lower. So it's less attractive to enter markets with higher share of customers who have bundles with the incumbent. And then there are also the strategic effects that are related to uh, the fact that there's one or two firms of each type already in the market. But the more entrants there are, the lower will be uh, profits. So now our model also implies that there are some constraints with respect to the values of this uh, strategic effects. This is based, uh, this is due the, to the assumptions that I discussed. So in particularly, uh, well, given that there are neg negative signs here in front, profits mu must be lower if there's one or two entrants of any type in the market. So this alphas and gammas must be positive. Also, um, they should be increasing in absolute value uh, with respect to the number of firms that are in the market. So the coefficient on one entrant must be smaller than the coefficient on two entrants. And also in accordance with assumption three, the, the difference between consecutive alphas should be greater than the difference in, between consecutive gammas. So these are the constraints that we should see once we estimate the model. Otherwise the model wouldn't be consistent with our assumptions. Okay, just uh, one thing with respect to our key variable of interest. So this histogram here illustrates the share of households that have fixed mobile connections uh, as distributed across different municipalities. Right, so as you see, there's quite lots of variation. There are many municipalities in which there, there are, there's nobody with fixed mobile bundles or a small share of population, but there are also some in which more than 50% of households have fixed mobile connection. The mo most important thing is that there's a lot of variation and obviously we need variation to be able to identify the effect. Okay, now uh, looking at the estimates of the model. So, uh, so far we don't estimate the full model of entry. Uh, this is of course challenging and we're working on this, but instead we estimate something similar that approximately is like the model of entry, which is a bivariate ordered probit. And uh, so essentially these parameters here, they say what is the impact of different variables on, on profits of firms and we split firms into small and big, uh, right? There are some differences with respect to how these variables impact profits of small and big firms. What is important is the variable bundle, which is our main variable of interest. Uh, this variable he's, here says where bundling fixed and mobile services negatively impact profits of each type of firms. And what we see is that uh, bundling negatively impacts profits of small firms, but in fact has positive impact on profits of large firms, right? But here we don't control in the first model yet for uh, strategic effects. So the presence of other type of firms in the market. When we include the presence of other type of firms in the market, then we see that say the presence of big firms negatively impacts profits of small firms and the presence of small firms negatively impacts profits of big firms, which, which is what we should observe. We also see that bundling st stays negative and significant in case of small firms. It, it, become, it is still positive, but less significant in the case of large firms. Now there is another issue, which is namely that these variables here, so the presence of other firms in the market is uh, endogenous, as well as bundling itself may be endogenous. So we need to control for endogeneity, and we do this by means of control function approach where in the first step, we uh, estimate regress bundling on set of uh, socioeconomic variables as well as instruments. And then in second step, we use the error correction term from the first step stage in the, in the entry model. 
So after including the error term, we do have negative and significant impact of bonding on both types of firms. All right, so I'm over with time. Then let me quickly conclude. As I said, this is still work in progress. So there are some things we, which we need to do. But for now, I can say the following things. So we can see that there is negative impact of fixed mobile bundling on the market share of entrants. Okay, I didn't discuss this uh, in detail because of lack of time, but this was like a first step preliminary before our uh, model of entry. Second, in the case of model of entry, we see that uh, bundling has negative impact on profits and therefore on entry of small firms that cannot offer fixed mobile bundles. But we also see that the, the impact on large firms in the case of model two was positive, even though not very significant. But it's still work in progress. Uh, our expectation is more in the line that there will be negative impacts of bonding on small firms. In the case of large firms, it's most likely to be insignificant. In any case, what is the purpose of modeling this problem in such a way? Uh, so we need strategic model if you want to do some counterfactual simulations. And in particular, we want to make a statement whether fixed mobile bonding has the potential of foreclosing competition. And this would happen if with bonding, there would be less entrants than without bonding, right? So what we want to do with this model, once we estimate the impact of bonding, is now to consider that there is no bonding, so take away bonding from the model, and then estimate the number of entrants that we would observe in different local markets. If the number of entrants would be bigger without bonding than we observe, then we can conclude that indeed, uh, fixed mobile bonding has the potential of foreclosing competition and entry into fixed problem market. All right, I'm a bit over time. There's uh, like a few minutes left for any questions. Uh, anybody wants to ask any questions? Okay. Can I ask, uh, Lucas? Yes. Hi, hi Witness. How, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Great. So I just wanted to find out um, when you look at uh, the idea of bundling and uh, for products, but also I think I didn't hear you talk about the fixed cost of entry. So are there any fixed cost of entry? Uh, because if there are fixed cost of entry, it might be possible that um, actually bundling might be even wealth enhancing in the sense that. Uh, you sort of you, with bundling, you can be able to minimize your the, the fixed cost of entry, and that allows sort of consumers to benefit from slightly uh, cheaper prices. Whereas if you don't bundle, if the fixed cost of entry are high, regardless of, of the number of products that you produce or you provide or services you provide, then you find that uh, without bundling, actually the fixed cost will be much higher, and that the prices will be higher, even though there are many uh, uh, competitors in the market. I don't know well, what's your thoughts on what your thoughts on that. Thanks. So um, indeed, so going back to the profits, um, the way the way profits are defined here, uh, they don't specify uh, what is the element of say revenues and variable cost versus fixed costs. So there are there are also other models of entry. Uh, which specify which variables uh, impact fixed costs versus which variables uh, impact revenues and the, the revenues part. So, so here, in a way, we, we use a reduced for model. We don't really say uh, explicitly that there are fixed costs or not, um, but obviously uh, the way entry works, there are fixed costs. Uh, so if I go back to, 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 the, to, to this figure here, and as I discussed, earlier, uh, entry takes place by making an investment uh, uh, and putting some equipment into this main distribution frame. This equipment, uh, now I cannot say how much it costs exactly, but I think this is something at the range of 200,000 euros or more. So you need this money to buy the equipment and therefore you can enter this market. So there's fixed cost. And once, there's, once you are in the market, 
uh, then you can of course try to take over lines from the incumbent which would be maybe some additional marketing expenditure and so on but clearly the, there's a fixed cost and there's variable cost of operating uh, different connections so uh, so uh, with respect to your question uh, the thing is that these firms that enter they they cannot offer bundles uh, with exception of these big firms right and 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 the cost of uh, offering the second element of the bundle which is mobile services is a different cost because it, it's related to coverage and the mobile network um, so um, so I'm so, so while, while there are fixed costs, I'm not sure uh, whether uh, whether they would make the market overall or the, the prices uh, higher or or not necessarily. So, and, and yeah, what I mean is, it's not it's not clear to me how they may impact how this may impact uh, prices. So, the presence of entry or the presence of fixed costs. I don't. I don't think personally that uh, this may have an an a positive impact. So, present of fiscal may have positive impact on prices. I'm not sure. So, I'm not sure whether I answered your your question right now in full. So, your your, your question was related to whether this fixed cost. Uh, can have impact on competitiveness because now you have entrant that has to cover fixed costs or yes yes that's sort of my 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 point that uh, when you enter so the idea is that you should be able to recover your fixed costs at least so so the more entrants you get uh, sometimes you get this uh, you you sort of uh, increase the sort of the aggregate sort of fixed cost in the sector and of course it, it can actually affect uh, pricing whereas yeah. if you bundle uh, and uh, as long as uh, if you can bundle as long as the fixed costs are sort of remain more or less the same then actually the the, uh, the cost per service would be lower because you are you are spreading the fixed cost over sort of more sort of uh, units so that's that was sort of the, the point but now I get it was you say uh, for the smaller entrants, they don't have the option to, to, to bundle, which means they have to just go with uh, that particular service, uh, which right. so that's, it doesn't matter for the fixed costs. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe like if I would take a starting point, a situation in which there is no entrant at all, uh, which means like that the only supplier of uh, fixed services is the incumbent and the incumbent can offer bundle or no bundle. And uh, now the way we model is, so let's say there's an entrant that comes in and has to cover fixed costs. And by, by assumptions that we make in the model, uh, this entrant lowers uh, profits of, of, uh, of, of, of all firms. Uh, so by assumptions that we make, uh, so since entry lowers profits, that that then it must mean that th this effect comes from uh, lowering revenues. So in a way, lo lowering uh, prices and sharing potentially lowering prices, but also sharing customers uh, among each other. In which case, yeah, it would be harder to cover also this fixed costs uh, since after entry you would be having only share of the market, and before entry the incumbent had full market. Um, so eventually, at some point of time, firms cannot cover anymore. If the share of customers they get would be too small, they can, cannot anymore cover their fixed costs and they would not enter. Um, so th that's, that's essentially what, uh, what would be the implication here. But the competitive impact here would come uh, on one hand, from stealing some consumers from from the incumbent and other firms, and on the other hand, potentially by lowering price. But but we don't, yeah, we we don't explicitly model the impact on price. More like based on this assumption that profits decline, that for sure 
the customer base is being shared by more than one team as a result of entry. Are there any other questions? So with this, if there are no other questions, then I would like to finish the presentation. If you have, will have any other questions, then also feel free to send me an email. Uh, this presentation was recorded and will be uploaded on ERSA website. I would also like to ask and encourage anybody that uh, has any work in progress to uh, send me an email and express willingness to present at the seminars. So as I said, the, the objective of the seminars is to facilitate exchange of ideas uh, in South Africa and build capacity, research capacity. Uh, eventually, uh, uh, in the next months, there will be also offered some courses online, right? but there will be announcements which will be sent about this. But I strongly encourage anybody to uh, raise their hands and uh, present something at the seminars. All right, otherwise, uh, there'll be another seminar next week by Shaista Goa. She will present something on e-commerce in South Africa. So I also uh, will send an announcement and encourage anybody to participate.